Well, there's a welcome sight for the followers of the eastern suburbs. Craig Salvatore back. Captains the team. They run out to a healthy reception from the Bondi crowd, King Salvo. He's got his own fan club. David Seidenkamp's got a big job in front of him tonight. Fireworks welcome in the start of the new season. Dragons hoping at the end of this rainbow. The number two will not be sitting alongside their name, but number one. Walford Magic Priddle Power. Whatever they supply, this man will equal and probably go one better, Brad Mackay. On the sideline, Steve Roach. Yeah, well, conditions a lot better than they were an hour ago. Plenty of noise here, as you can hear. The ground in great condition, considering all the wet weather we've had during the week. The latest from the Eastern Suburbs room is that Brian Smith is expected to have a big game because he's replacing Gary Freeman, and they've been a bit poor with their trial form. St George have won the toss, and they'll be running towards the Sydney cricket ground. Well, these two clubs, since uh, they both were playing in the Premiership proper, have clashed on numerous occasions. Let's have a look at the head-to-head -head for them. 153 times they've played, and St George have the better of it at 86 wins. Last year, it was an embarrassment for Eastern Suburbs in round 12 down at Cogra. 46-0 St George won, and lower grades tonight. East won the President's Cup, St George won reserve grade. Greg McCallum is the man in charge. He's the number one referee going into the start of 1994. I wonder will he be blowing the whistle on that last Sunday in September in the top grade. A great year of rugby league is underway then. Goulet, the first man tackle. And Walford reaches the 20 metre line. Saints were hammered in the injury department at Narandra a few weekends ago. And most of them have recovered. Blake. And that's young Stevens. And he'll remember his last visit to the Sydney Football Stadium, or will he? Injured at about this time after trying to pull off a big tackle, I think it was, on Glenn Lazarus. Goldthorpe is back. And that's medicine, medicine for St George fans. Silva, one of the more explosive fullbacks in the game. 13th year of the Winfield Cup is underway. This year and 95 to go for the company that joined the league in 1982. And here's the first penalty of the match. The first of the season goes to Eastern Suburbs. Been a very vigorous start in defence for St George. Jason Stevens here just going overboard. Mark Coyne came up with a big hit on the kick chase. Brian Smith will now find touch in St George territory here and he will be looking to lead the way direct his players around in Brian Smith no Gary Freeman the job's now his Jeff Orford the man who played it Sinclair in the headgear put away by Stevens and Mackay Gaffey good run by Gaffey he beats Stevens in defence to the blind, a pretty wide one too. Salvatore bumps away from Mackay. They're only about five yards away. A chance for Eastern Suburbs. Silva! Ball pops out and Priddle dives on it. And already on a couple of occasions, the St George defence has cracked open. Gaffey made a real surging run to get them in a good position. Look at that, the defence comes up too quick out there, but a good tackle there, I think it's by Maybon. That saved the try. So St George back to the 20-metre line. Their own end of the park. Rugby League headquarters plays host to the opening match. Goulet ran the decoy. They pick up Riddle on the left. Goldthorpe off the outside edge. And, oh, Walford. Well, Walford, I think, has carried this across the line. Why he wanted to tamper with it, I'm not sure. 
Let's have a look at it. The ball's going out there. He knows that it's going to be an east feed anyway. Got to keep it in play and might maybe progress the ball further down the field if Coyne could have got a kick in. It's now a changeover in Eastern Suburbs. You can show, that shows how good their defence has been. Goldthorpe has kicked from around the 20 metre line on both occasions. The point I was making with Walford, though, was he had his back to the opposition, and it's very dangerous to try flick passes and the like with your back on the opposition. Gaffy now, 33 metres out from the line, centre of the ground. Jason Lowry runs over the top of David Barnhill. He's back from injury amongst a host of players from that Narendra battle. Silver's playing a prominent role in the early exchanges. He's 20 metres out from the line. And this is the last. What will they do? They go blindside and Salvatore looks for the speed man on the outside. That's good work by Werrett and Salvatore. And it's a line dropout for St George. And not a bad ploy either, kicking for your, your fastest man on the field. It was a good kick from Salvatore. Smith on the left-hand side kept defenders over there. Where it nearly got around the outside of his man, but look at that. That's great play. Dragging the St George man into the end goal. They'll get six again. He's learning every week is Shane Werrett. He won the rugby league sprint at the Botany Bay Gift just the other day and uh, made it very clear that he is the fastest man in rugby league probably in the world today now Iro with that heavy bandage on the right knee they're good yards 30 meters out from the line lowry he didn't have the impact because when he reached the point where he wanted the football, he was standing still. Ryan Smith needs two points to reach 200 in first grade. Luke Rickardson has put down, injured in the sevens. Smith now got an awful pass. Wide for Seidenkamp, he's fleet of foot. In fact, they've got two kids next to each other, him and Hudson. They both step very quickly. Smith gets in a delightful bomb. Plenty of height. Oh, Maybon was great under pressure. Yeah, great take there by Rod Maybon. He's transferred, transferred over from South Sydney. He's under pressure already. This is a great take. Well, there is a, a very good chase here by a couple of weeks and some of those players. Rickardson was the man coming through. Pretty good work there from Jason Donnelly as well on the wing for St George to get in the way of Rickardson. Just took a metre away from him when he arrived to touch after the ball landed, then at the same time. Goulet now. Penalty to Saints. Is that made. only the second in the game? A mistake made by, I think it's Tony Oro. Goulet looking for a quick play the ball here. And Oro with the second tackle pushes him down again. Mackay taking the kick for line. We already beat St George under the hammer early in this game. It's been all Eastern Suburbs. Well, the kicking game from East has been outstanding. The little grubber through for the speed men. And then Brian Smith, the high kicking game, it's put pressure on them. But the feature to me has been this defence. Three in that tackle there. They've really played good field position. And it's been because they've been very tough. They've muscled up in defence. Stevens. Short pass down and away for Barnhill. 40 metres out from their own line now. Through Goldthorpe and Blake. Coyne tries to accelerate. They are going across the park. And they lost ground on that exchange. Walford. No Ian Heron tonight in the St George team. But we're led to believe that Goldthorpe will do the kicking. Blake for Goulet. Oh, that was a chance for the Dragons. But now, defence becomes a tap for Eastern Suburbs. Yeah, nice short pass here. And Scott Goulet found himself in some space. But Jeff Walford was the man for Eastern Suburbs who got in the way. He saved a dicey situation for the Roosters as Sinclair makes good metres. Heavy stuff in the centre of the ground, 29 metres out. East again on the attack. I don't think St George has been over the halfway mark yet. And we're eight minutes into the game. Eastern Suburbs with 100% territorial advantage. St Cat. One starts to wonder just how long St George can hold them. 
Donnelly. Well, that helps their cause. Side and Camp coming up with the mistake. Barnhill involved in the tackle. So too Bradley. It was Bradley's hand that forced it out. Should have been a penalty to Eastern Suburbs. How many times do you see a team under siege like St George has been? And suddenly they put the ball down the other end of the park. Is it unfolding here? Goulet looks for his wingman, finds his centre man. Walford goes 10 metres from the line. Walford's 11 out. East holding on in defence. Fed by Coyne through Collins and put down by Mackay. Penalty St George. He's got right them, in front. Got them for offside, but uh, a wasted chance there for St George. The pass from Collins was too hard to Mackay and he couldn't control it, but he really carved them up there. St George Goulet's made two breaks now. Look at this pass. He's looking to cut out Mackay and give it to Barnhill. Yeah, what about the pass that set it up from Jason Stevens? This is a bottler. This pass here, great ball. You know, Steve Rach has got an enormous rap on, on this front row because he can go to the line and, and put the ball to a man running into a gap. Good support play, great cover from Shane Werrett. Must be a great luxury for Toome to have the cover defence and a man like Werrett who can get across the ground so quickly. But in the end, they're offside and it looks like costing them two points. Look like being six. Salvatore just urging his players on. Ten minutes of the game gone. They've had 99% of the territory. They've been dealing the cards since we started the Winfield Cup for 1994. But after Goldthorpe, uh, Goldthorpe puts this over, they're going to be two points in arrears on the scoreboard. 12 metres out right in front. You'd like to get a shade of black, but you're not going to. Two points, nil. 2-0 in favour of the Saints after 10. <laughs> 2 nil in favour of St George. Friday night football, 10 minutes gone. And don't be fooled by the, uh, the scoreboard if you've just joined us. Eastern Suburbs have had all of the play. And they just left a little bit of a, a leak in the wall. And St George were down there and a penalty goal. Other than that, it's been all Eastern Suburbs. And you, they've had all the football as well. Priddle plays it 30 out from his own line through Blake. And then to the other half. And that was Goldthorpe. And then David Barnhill puts it down, but he was under heavy pressure. But Eastern Suburbs, they come back now. 15 out, Sinclair to play it. Working their way towards the centre of the ground. They do that. Lowry promotes it back for Marshall. And Marshall has put away eight metres out. Brian Smith, a little juggle, waits for the call. And he finds Gaffey coming off the left. Hudson, the new boy, the rookie, lightning off both feet. Two metres out, five gone. Gaffey, the dummy half. Smith puts the grabber across, looking for Werrett and Ricketson. Donnelly's there. Passes in goal! Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, how close. Even Greg McCallum can afford to smile. Rod Maybon, the little shake of the head. Jason Donnelly did a good job cleaning it up. Good tactics, these. Brian Smith kicking for his chases to maybe put on a try. Then Donnelly looking to get the hands free. It came out. Unfortunately, Rod Maybon was right on the spot. Sidon Camp claimed the try. The referee on the spot so close. Maybon looked up at Donnelly as if to say, what are you doing? A little rush of blood for Jason Donnelly. Salvatore. 35 out from the line, and here they come again. Iro taken in a blockbuster. They hit him, two of them together, and young Stevens was one of them again. So was Goulet, whose tackle count already is up to half a dozen. Here's Marshall. 10 metres out from the line. 
Silver away through Smith and then Seiden, Camp and Gaffey. Ten out and ten in from touch. Smith, his kicking game is the focal point and the bomb is a beauty. It came off the St George head. That's a try. Rod Silver. Rod Silver gets a try off a header. And the secret to this try was the height of the kick that gave the Eastern Suburbs attacking line plenty of time to get through there and the numbers they had. Now, are they all on side? Yes, they are. And just look at how many Eastern Suburbs players go through. There's three, four, and St. George Maybon, he was hundreds. They went for it. It actually came off. Jason Lowry has tapped that football back in silver. Christmas time for him. Oh, I don't know. Is it off the head here? Or... Well, it, yeah, you're right, Fatty. Larry's done a sensational job there. And Silver, it could have been three or four East players who scored the try. Tremendous kick. Mayborn, not a tall fullback, so he was behind the eight ball straight away. The St George defence have been outstanding. But when a kick like that goes up, it is a lottery. And the chasing game from Eastern Suburbs was very, very good. Brian Smith then for 200 points in first grade. Seems incredible, doesn't it? A short time he's been in rugby league. And there it is. 200 first grade points for Brian Smith. More importantly, East lead by 6-2 to two after 14. Welcome back to the Sydney Football Stadium, the first game in the Winfield Cup for the new year. The preliminaries are over. This is the fair dinkum stuff. It's been torrid in the forwards. Steve Roach, a couple of the kids that you've had an eye on, have been quite outstanding. Yeah, it's, uh, as you said, it has been tough in the forwards. I do admire the way the Eastern Suburbs are getting straight back on the ball and running hard with Sinclair and Salvatore especially, but you can never take away from the class. Jason Stevens out wide, putting, uh, putting uh, Goulet into that big gap. That was class football. So was that tackler from St George putting Luke Rickardson over the sideline. Those kind of mistakes do change games. So a scrum feed 28 metres out. They've got one against the feed. Unbelievable. Well, it's turning out to be... A great night for Eastern Suburbs. Lady Luck is really smiling on them. Salvatore out of the scrum quickly and takes a part in the second play. Hudson a dummy half. Tries to brush away from Goulet but wrapped up. Hudson played 21s for Cronulla last year. And he's already won a Man of the Match award in the Tui's Challenge. Marshall is handy a dummy half, more than that, he's a good player. Sinclair in the headgear, as is Marshall. Smith. Superb kicking game so far from Brian Smith. Maybach. Left the Rabbits to join the Dragons. Jason Donnelly. Bradley now, wrapped up by Rickardson and Lowry. I guess the Saints, all they can do is hang on there and hope that Eastern Suburbs go off the boil. Everything's gone great for Eastern Suburbs, really. Scrums one against the head. A bomb comes down with pinpoint accuracy. Goldthorpe puts on a sprint, cuts out Goulet, finds Coyne. Coyne takes the tackle, Walford goes away from the sideline. Nice chain of rugby league along the St George back line. Yes, and good defence there by Eastern Suburbs. They knew it was the fifth tackle, and Saints tried to run it as Hudson nearly gets through. Goldthorpe's got him, but Saints have tried this on three or four occasions. They're going to try and run around the East defence all night. Marshall goes for a scoot away from Dummy Hart. 
Silver is living up at dummy half for the most part or at first receiver. Iro comes out wide. 22 out now. There's the 20 metre line. Salvatore again. The same play. This time. This time. It's a try for Werrett. Werrett gets the try off the boot of Craig Salvatore. Uh, sensational stuff there. We talked about the kicking game of Brian Smith, but Craig Salvatore, for a big man, has a very astute kicking game. And on this occasion, again, the line for St George comes up. So much speed for Werrett. Donnelly has to turn and chase. He's a big man. Werrett flying. Beautiful skills there. Fingertip control. Perfectly executed. Yeah, two great skills there. First of all, Salvatore, point of the toe, along with the grubber, and that's a great pickup by Werrett. And it comes back to the mistake made by St. George. They could have kicked that football and been down in East Territory. Instead, they were caught inside their half, took the gamble, hasn't paid off, and East now lead 10 points to two. Now, I think the important thing, Paul, when they've tried to run the football in the last is at least haven't overread the situation. They've been prepared to, to stay up in the line to an extent and turn and, and chase instead of going back. And it hasn't worked. They got they got possession in pretty good position there. What about the control of where it to take that in the end? What about the way he's uh, grabbed his opportunity in rugby league? He's only been playing the game in Winfield Cup for a bit over 12 months. And he's grabbed a first grade spot and he's handling it with great professionalism. Brian Smith's attempt at conversion just offline. Ten points to two. A quarter of the game gone. And this was Salvatore with a beautifully weighted kick. Yes, by running to the line, Craig Salvatore had brought the St George defence up. It always makes it difficult to turn and chase. Let's give Salvatore a wrap too. Apart from good kicking skills, his involvement after 10 months out of the game has been nothing short of, of phenomenal. He's come up with nine tackles, three hit-ups. Scouting out wide is a real handful for defence. and He's going to be a key player for East this year. A great enthusiasm shown by Eastern Suburbs in the opening 20 minutes. Now the players come to realise that the two is challenge is over. Instead of taking a break, we keep pressing on. Penalty for Easts. 25 out from their own line. They lead by 10 points to two. But the confidence boosting aspect of the score is the two tries to nil. Wear it. Rickardson, in fact. Brian Smith. Long pass out across the face of Salvatore, finding Gaffey. And now Lowry. Right on the halfway line. Play by Salvatore. Hudson gets out from dummy half. Been quite a bit of dummy half running by Eastern Suburbs. Nothing wrong with that. Brian Smith taken. McCallum saw it. It's not late. He's just checking with his touch judges. St. George with the ball just in the field of play. Smith. We got hit by Coyne, but I thought Coyne was committed to the tackle, so no drama there. And Saints now on their fourth tackle. They're only 10 metres out from their line. This East defence has been great. Look at them. They want to hurt. They want to drive back. And Tony Iroh, former winger from Manly, has been, uh, he's had a great game so far tonight. They've also been able to get numbers in the tackle. You see there's three players rolling him on his back. That has slowed the play. The ball's down for St George. Made it much more difficult for them to get momentum. Goldthorpe finds touch 45 out from his own line. But again, Eastern Suburbs get possession in the opposition's half. Well, there you see the Eastern Suburbs defence just moving forward all the time. Jason Stevens 
take him to ground. The important thing there was that the Eastern Suburbs players on the outside didn't allow any opportunities for Stevens to get the ball out. They went up in the umbrella formation, and that was very effective. Seiden camp. Penalty against St George. This will be a differential penalty. Inside the five, the backs from the scrum. It's Graham Bradley there who uh, really came up very fast early before this ball had even come out of the scrum. So, the Eastern Suburbs Arthur's kicked by Smith. They're inside the quarter. So, it's alarm bells again for the, the Dragons. Tap taken deep inside St George's territory. Let's just have a look where Tony Iroh is setting himself. There he is on the left-hand side there with the, the thigh guard. That's him coming back up the middle of the ruck. He's the man they'll look for. And he's, he's come up with the mistake, forcing the pass to Silver. So Bradley relieves the pressure for the Saints. And the Dragons are getting replacements ready in 41 and 40. Gordon Tallis and Jeff Hardy about to come into the game. Stevens and Barnhill come from the ground. Straight into the game is Gordon Tallis. He's been in superb form in the preseason. Goldthorpe tries to clear. Silver. Not a good kick from Goldthorpe. He's a fine player and uh, a very good tactical kicker. But because he's been off the scene for quite some time, just a few of his things, uh, particularly in the kicking game, have gone wrong. That's Rickardson. Salvatore again, running to the line and kicking. Maybon falls back for it. And now he attempts to run away from Werrett. He does that. He was running right across the ground, so Werrett dropped off and left it to somebody else. And the man who tackled him is Salvatore, so his kicking game is, uh, is going great guns tonight, Salvo. I still don't know that his knees 100%. I've seen him wince a couple of times in the tackles, but uh, he's leading the way. Got an injured player here for Eastern Suburbs. We Sinclair down. Penalty to St George. But the tactic that they've employed Eastern Suburbs now by kicking to where it's wing, Rod Maybon really starting to favour that side of the field. I wouldn't be surprised to see Brian Smith maybe start kicking for Jeff Orford's wing. Not as quick, but nearly as quick as where it. And if Maybon now starts to fade across there and thinking that they'll kick for where it all the time, Orford might be just the man to, to explode down this left-hand side. Any dramas for St George Blocker, or were they just uh, regimental changes made by Brian Smith? No, just changes. I think the difference in the game at the moment is uh, Eastern Suburbs' enthusiasm in tackles, and I think that why they put Gordon Tallis on, he adds that enthusiasm for the St George side. Brad Mackay, 22 metres out from the line. Prittle takes it back to that point. Collins is the dummy half. Back for Goldthorpe, but Blake goes ahead. I was about to say they weren't going anywhere. They were standing and passing. Collins comes back to the blind side. Coyne gets around the player. Priddle puts the ball down. A good defence here from, I think, Jason Lowry came across for Eastern Suburbs, forcing the ball out with a tackle up around the midriff. Coyne nearly getting outside his man. There's the pass back inside. And there's Lowry coming up with the timely tackle. Smith working the scrum 10 metres away from his own line. And that is Jeff Orford now. 3-0 the scrums, Eastern Suburbs. And one of those against the head. Sinclair. Sunday, of course. We've got uh, the footy show back on air. And uh, then Sunday night, Sunday night football 
with Manly versus Canterbury. No finish out this weekend. We started a little bit down, down the track. Paul Wharton in charge once again. He just refuses to work early in the season, Fatty. I wanted to work this weekend, Ray, but he wouldn't be in it. Maybon now. Walford. Jason Donnelly. Way out of uh, his territory, really. He's playing on the left side, but uh, that run was made on the right flank. Paul, is it fair to say that if Eastern Suburbs get to the front... Oh, a mistake there from Phil Blake, and another mistake. I'm not going to say it. It wasn't a mistake. It's gone. <laughs> not gone, not gone. Is it fair to say that Eastern Suburbs getting a lead like this, compared to other sides in the competition, probably harder to, to come from behind against them with their style of play? Well, they do tend to close the game down. I mean, they don't do much from the start, really. They're a good... Uh, as Gaffey breaks in the scrum. He makes a mistake now, which has been pulled up. Um, look, they run from dummy half a lot. Their kicking game's good. You're not going to see East trying to play the sort of game that St. George is trying to play tonight. St. George are wanting to move this football whenever they can. But what they're not doing, St. George, they're making it easy for East by running, not running any angles out wide and putting no skill on the defence. They're just trying to go uh, one out. Here's a bit of skill now. Maybe Maybon finds half a gap. Works the angle with Donnelly. Donnelly to the halfway and the Eastern Suburbs defence through Werrett. Held tight. Mackay works some play. Goldthorpe goes down the ground. Floats the pass over for Collins. Then for Tellis. And Gaffey pulls off a good tackle. 31 metres away. Bradley steps out of a tackle. Gets inside the 20 metre line. Eastern Suburbs have the football. That's set play back down the other end of the park off the scrum. It opened Eastern Suburbs up for Rod Mabin. Play the ball going straight through the legs of Rod uh, of Wayne Marshall. Offered away for Marshall now. He looks on the outside, finds Silva, gets away from one. Callum has called it forward, the pass to David Seidenkamp. A yeah, shame there because there was another player in support which was probably the better option. Well and truly onside. Good interplay here. That's Marshall back inside to Silva. The right foot step beat Goulet. Now he comes back to link up on the inside. Seidenkamp overran it. Orford was onside. Eight and three quarter minutes from the halftime break as Mackay reaches the halfway line. They keep it going through Maybon and Goldthorpe. The little men of the side, they combine. Now played by Blake. And that's Donnelly working in heavy traffic. Collins gave him some support. Goldthorpe again. That's Bradley. Tallis steps and steps again. Right foot, then left. 30 out, centre of the ground. Collins, Goldthorpe, Goulet. Priddle, wide. Five gone, and this is the last. Goldthorpe goes back across the ground with the high bomb. Hardy's coming through. Came off his hands. Hits the upright St George, but it's called back by McCallum. Came off Hardy, went forward. Bradley says, what happened? There's a turnover here. Silver flying high. Ball gone forward off Hardy. What about the collision here? This is, well, there's the pad on there. No try. Full Blake complains. Eastern Suburbs with possession. Under eight minutes to go in this first half. Sinclair. Gaffey looks for an opportunity. Marshall and Silva, particularly Silva, he's playing very much on the ball tonight. 
Callum will call it back and order the scrum. Ten points to two, 33 minutes gone in the opening of the Winfield Cup. Scrum 35 out from the East Line. Blake put down. Sinclair comes up with it. 10 2 Eastern Suburbs leading. And uh, some mistakes creeping into the game at a higher frequency in the last probably 10 minutes of the game. Gaffey. Well, I think one of the first things you look to do in a game of rugby league when you go out there is to make sure your marker defence is spot on. We've seen Phil Blake come up with a couple of mistakes trying to get out of dummy half. It's because East have done very well in that, in that area. So too has Wayne Marshall up the middle of the ruck, scooting out himself. He's reached the 20 metre line. Can Eastern Suburbs find another try? They've been called back here. Someone's having a crack at McCallum there, but he, I think he knocked it on in the play the ball. Little Wayne Marshall made the big run. Will Blake's got a hand in there, and you might find that had something to do with Wayne Marshall dropping the football. About something, maybe everything. Saints winning the scrum on their own 20 metre line, and that's Maybon linking up from the full back position, but the penalty has been given. Eastern Suburbs this time inside the five from the scrum. Well, at least McCallum's been consistent tonight. He's had a good first half, consistent in all his rulings. He pinged St George once for that offence, and now East have copped the same serve. Brad Mackay's touch finder. Right on the halfway mark. Not a bad crowd in either at the football stadium tonight. Such as the size of the uh, the ground that you can have 15,000 and they tend to get lost. But uh, there's a nice crowd here for the opening night. Triddle now, 48 metres out from his uh, from his opponent's opponent's line. Away from Blake and across the back for Mark Coyne. He puts on a sprint, but he is running crabwise. He links up, though, with Gordon Tellis. Tellis strides out down to the 20-metre line, runs away from uh, the support. Good defence by Silva. And then a penalty goes to the Saints. And Silva's got 10 on the bend. He was never on side. Professional foul. He's off. Gordon Tellis once again made a bustling, bumping run. He made 40 metres. Great run here from Tallis. Good work also from Jeff Orford in defence to tell the man on the outside or the inside who he was to get. You'll see him point. Silver comes across. Tallis taking in a good tackle. Oh, he, was, he tried to get back on side. Silver never quite did it as Wayne Collins continues play on. Under four minutes to go. Three and a half first half. Blake. Ten metres out. To the right of the ground, Mark Coyne throws the dummy. Very close to the line. Wilford put in a touch. Oh, great defence. The Roosters fans go up. And that's just not being patient with this football. St George has showed a, a great deal of impatience tonight. They want to score off every time they get the football. And uh, Ricky Wolford, a very sh a short blind there with three defenders in front of him. So a vital passage of the game. Always is that last five minutes or so coming up to the break and Eastern Suburbs reduced to 12 men. Saints had their chance there and uh, they blew it. Just putting yourself in Rod Silver's position though, what would you have done? Well, I think there was enough east defence there to... Uh, and they're all coming back fairly quickly. Fit side, there's east side this year, and uh, now I would have just got back in the full-back position. Well, the thing that I don't... I didn't think was a professional foul on, on Silver's behalf. I think he did believe that he made enough of an effort to go back as that kick from Brian Smith out on the full. The pendulum starting to swing St George's way here just on half-time. 
against 12 men. Desperate to run in a try here in this final two minutes. Put the ball through the hands and Goldthorpe almost slicing through. 30 metre line left behind them as Coyne promotes for Tallis to reach the 20. Collins brings it back to the right for Goldthorpe. He holds it back for Goulet. Goulet, he'll score. Goulet puts it down. St George's first try. Ten points to six. And the pressure finally telling on the east defence. It's finally cracked. And Scott Goulet, who's been lurking out wide all night, strides through. He had plenty of work to do. It's a lovely ball here by Goldthorpe. Draws one. There's the gap. Hudson uh, stayed on his outside man, a missed tackle by Gaffey. And once Goulet got through, had a short run to the line. Yes, they didn't have a bad line there, Eastern Suburbs, but the size and the strength of, of Scott Goulet, plus the well-weighted pass from Noel Goldthorpe, opened things up. Hudson staying on the outside, as Paul pointed out. And once Goulet was through, he didn't have far to run. We come back to a couple of mistakes that Eastern Suburbs have made in this last two or three minutes. It's a very cruel thing to happen in the final minute of the first half. Under a minute to go. And they'll be disappointed with their effort in not keeping St George out for the full 40. Goldthorpe with the attempt at conversion. Siren will sound. Immediately he's taken this kick. 22 out, 8 metres in from touch and just offline. So at half time, two tries to one, Eastern Suburbs leading St George. 10 points to six. A pretty good way to start the season. We'll take a break and be back with Peter Sterling, Paul Vorton, and the general manager of the league, John Quayle. Time on now for the second half. And Mackay's restart. Ball bouncing about five metres out from the uprights. I don't know that he struck it as well as he wanted to. Let's have a look at the, uh, the opposition now in their defence department. And hit up work. Smith drops it onto the right foot. And Maybon scurries back away from his 30 metre line. Struggles to get up. Good defence by East though. Making the tackled player the last to get up. That's normally the aim of all players and coaches. Goulet out wide. Chalice. So Eastern Suburbs coming up with the ball. A couple of replacements on there for Eastern Suburbs. In 52 is Mark Prothero. Brian Smith shows it back on the inside before taking the, uh, the tackle. Hudson. In for a gap. 53 is out there as well. Wayne Singh for the uh, the tricolours. Gaffey tries to probe and make the gap, which closes 10 metres out. Back for Brian Smith to drop it onto the boot, and there goes the bomb again. Ball goes to ground and over the dead ball line, and he's ordering it back out to the 20 metre line for the restart. Another fine kick by Smith. On this occasion, though, just have a look at how many St George players rush back there to give Maybon support and this is why uh, there was no try scored indeed it came off an eastern suburbs hand here's the kick by Smith just look at the alarm bells ring here and uh, the St George players I think it's who was it uh, Mark Coyne came back and, and saved it for them but now there's been a mistake made or something's happened to uh, Jason Donnelly he's got the crook Rocky Bowler 
but he's taken the ball up there and he's been hitting a heavy defense Vane Marsh and the ball's popped out he's obviously all landed awkwardly on that left shoulder so look at the Saints who's been working hard for them Jason Stevens done very well there 16 tackles because he spent 10 or 15 minutes off in that first half that just shows how hard he's been working Tony Priddle, seven hit-ups leads the way, but they've all been out wide. They're using out wide tonight. Pretty, uh, that's a good sign that St. George take on count. They're all working hard. Well, Donnelly has been replaced. His, uh, his left shoulder is gone. Now, there's the ball coming loose, and referee McCallum rules that uh, Gaffey lost it cold, and they're going to put a scrum down. Let's go down to the sideline and see what uh, Blocker was able to find out at halftime. Yeah, well, in the Eastern Suburbs room, they were very happy with the enthusiasm of their first half. They just said that they lost the plot in the last 15 minutes, trying to force passes. They've got to stick to the game plan. He was very happy with the efforts from the sport forwards, especially Craig Salvatore, who's come back after such a long layoff. And in the St George room, Brian Smith, well, you know, he's saying that there's not enough men in the tackle. They've got to finish off their tackles. Too many forced passes, and they've got to score first in the second half. Bradley playing it. Walford. 35 out from his own line. 10-6. No change to the halftime score. Gordon Tallis, as so often St George players have found, more than two players in defence waiting to greet them. Young Brown is on in 22 as Eastern Suburbs come away with the ball. Just get the feeling Phil Blake might be trying a little bit too hard out there. It's an opportunity, as Paul pointed out early, for Tony Smith. It looks like an imminent retirement for him. Blake has come up with some pretty ordinary mistakes as Gaffey nearly goes straight up the middle of the ruck inside the 20. An incident happened in the back oh. play involving Tony Priddle and Bruce Sinclair through the best right cross you've ever seen in your life as Rickardson goes for the line. Gets the pass away. Marshall's there to support. The little number nine is put down now. Seven metres out from St George's line. And this is the last. Smith comes from the left to the right. Puts the kick in. It's too heavy. Here comes over the, touch, the dead ball line. Now they'll go back to Priddle. Well, how's it going? Plenty of claret about. I saw it out the corner of my eye. Yes. It was an incident. I, I don't know how the uh, it was instigated, the incident, but I'll tell you, Bruce Sinclair did not miss Priddle. Here it is here in the play of the ball. Bit of jump. Oh, there's one thrown by Priddle, but he missed and Sinclair didn't. So, Blocker is down there, and did you have a sight on it? Yes, I did. Uh, he was hanging on to Bruce Sinclair, and, and uh, Tony Priddle threw the, threw the first punch, and Sinclair come back with a beauty. And as my grandfather told me, never put him up unless you can use him. <laughs> Here's Priddle. He tries to chop Sinclair away, goes with the left. Goes with the left, comes back with the right, and didn't travel very far. wonder what the report is going to be here. It looks as though that he's going to go against Priddle. If McCallum has asked Priddle to come and join the quorum that they've got going at the moment. Mark Coyne, the new captain of St George this year. Salvo sees a, a funny side to it. <laughs> I think that Salvo might have just told the St George players exactly what Steve Roach has said to us. Can't throw him and put him up. Blood bin for Tony Priddle then. I thought that right that you're talking about, it didn't get him as flush as I thought. If Priddle dead set let the first one go. He tried to get rid of Sinclair, was hanging on, hanging on to him, and uh, he let one go. It missed by a country mile. Fair Dinkum wouldn't want to tangle with either of them, but would you? Well, just having a look at Priddle, I don't particularly fancy tangling with Sinclair. Eh? Hey? No. Leave me right out of him. 
important. Kick this one now. An easy one for Smith to take them to a six-point lead. Be a converted try in front. Shouldn't have too many problems. Flags are up. 12-6 the score. Eastern Suburbs leading after 45 minutes. Welcome back now with uh, the scoreline again for you. Eastern Suburbs 12, St George 6, five minutes gone second half. And as you saw going into that break, Rod Silver is back on out of the, uh, the sin bin. As Brian Smith is asked to bring it back. I don't know that that's a good idea really for the number seven. He's got enough work on his plate anyway. Well, he didn't have a lot of choice there, Ray. In fact, it was a very good play. He caught the ball. If he'd have thrown it to the man coming onto the ball, it may well have been a forward pass in his own in-goal area. So he had to put the body on the line without much choice. Plenty of push and shove out there. Eastern Suburbs. A converted try in front. And they get the penalty. There's some frustration creeping into St George's game. And that's ridiculous play there. On the fifth tackle, they've done extra well there, St George, to control East. And Ian Heron has been on there 14 seconds and given away a penalty. Smith finding the line with quite a good kick. 40 metres out from his own line. And Rickardson gets it to within five metres of the halfway. Jaffrey running into a don't argue. Sinclair. And they wait for him and give him a solid tackle to think about. Smith. Seidenkamp. Hudson. Now for Smith to kick. Only a chip this time, and uh, Nathan Brown read it. Picked it up 30 metres out from his own line. They spread it quickly, St George. A coin is wrapped up by this rookie. Hudson, I mean. Goulet has taken... Low and high, and again some push and shove. Wayne Singh is in jumper 53. Mark Coyne got pretty upset with that tackle. Coming in, thought that Wayne Singh had done a bit of damage going high on his St George teammate, and now be called out and penalised. That was a rare sight, Craig Salvatore, former hothead himself. Now the captain, he's pulling Wayne Singh out of it, saying, settle down, we don't need this. It's a very high shot around the neck. Sign of good captain, good captaincy there by Craig Selwood. Really be pulling Singh out of it. Brad Mackay then takes the, the line finder. What's the report on uh, the two St George injuries, uh, Blocker, Donnelly and Priddle? Yeah, Jason Donnelly has a jarred shoulder. He hurt it early in the season in a charity shield match, and Tony Priddle's getting some stitches in the mouth. He'll be back. Ricky Walford. Brown. Gula forced back. There's just nothing offering for St George. Still, the intensity in defence for Eastern Suburbs is of a high level. Goldthorpe decides if you can't go through, go over. Where it's lost sight of it. Now he's put it down. There's a chance. Heron's tackle. Nine metres out. Eastern Suburbs will hold him down. They let him up to play the ball now. Here's Tellus. Tellus is three metres away from the line. Brown again scampers into dummy half. Holds the pass up a fraction. And Jeff Hardy... 
Hardy gets over the line to score. And uh, that brings up 100 points in first grade well, for Jeff Hardy. Some tip for tap there from St George. The kick angled towards Shane Werrett, and he made a complete meal of this one. Really had a pretty fair catch at it, even though you can see he was backing backwards. It wasn't a difficult catch. Bradley put the pressure on. The ball came out to Ian Heron. He couldn't keep the ball going himself. Eventually, Nathan Brown throws the good pass to Jeff Hardy, who goes straight through Luke Rickardson. We're backing backwards. Backing backwards. Where else do you back? <laughs> oh, but this is too many numbers out wide for St. George. And Jeff Hardy, too much pace and power for Rickardson. There's nowhere safe in this uh, commentary team. <laughs> one of your best. You don't need critics. You don't need critics. They're all sitting alongside you, Snorkel. Well, I left no doubt as to which way he was going, Ray. Absolutely. That was the important thing. At least he wasn't making forward progress. Exactly. It's a shame for Wirt because he's had a fine match tonight. Uh, scored a try. He's shown a lot of speed. And uh, he did have plenty of time to catch that football. Well... Jeff Hardy, 100 points in first grade. Ian Heron, he really had it on a string in reserve grade earlier. A match that the Dragons won. I don't know whether they would have without this fellow. 22 out, coming around, coming around and straight through. Now, we're even Stevens, are we? 12, 10, 12 all after 52. 12 all after 52, the score. And psychologically, that must hurt Eastern Suburbs. They would feel as though that they've, they've been on top for the majority of the game. They led by like, 10 points at one stage, and all of a sudden, back to what it was at kickoff time. And conversely, that will lift St George. Gulag. Coin. Give me a comment on him, Paul. If you, if you, well, I've got the impression that Coin tonight has been crabbing a, across the ground a bit and he hasn't been as effective as the Mark Coin we know. Well, it's a mistake made by St George in their own danger zone. It'll be a scrum packed down. But Mark Coin, he's suffering still, I believe, from an ankle injury he got during the two his challenge. But that is Mark Coin's go. He, he does like to stand up his men and run around them. Possibly tonight he's, he's trying too hard with those angles. Just a dispute between the halfbacks as to who has the feed here. Brian Smith has got no doubts. 32 metres away. He fed the ball. Gaffey picked it up at the back of the scrum. Sidon Camp is taken by Maybon. And Smith fell back onto the blind side. I thought they might have been going back to him, but that wasn't the case. Jeff Orford to play it. All the players gone to the other wing. We haven't seen very much of Orford tonight. He's a representative player too. Just outside the 20-meter line. 12 points all. And uh, even a drop goal could be in the minds of uh, both sides at this stage. Maybe it's a fraction early for it. Gaffy now, 10 metres out. All the field to work in. Brian Smith goes high and across. And it's a great kick. Heron flew high, but he's come down with absolutely nothing. And there he is getting out from dummy half. Ooh. Rickardson wrapped around the head. Did not miss Heron, who is still on the ground. Well, and he's on. He sent him off. He's gone. Rickardson has been sent. Well, has this been a hasty decision or... Well, McCallum's obviously seen something pretty serious in this tackle. It was a big swinging left arm by Rickardson. But you normally don't get sent off for these. And Heron makes the run. Rickardson comes in now. Swinging arm, but... Oh, gee, send off a full offence, I don't know. Well, I think on what we saw last year, Paul, yes, it is. The arm was stiff and hit him flush across the centre of the face. A fair deal of, of intent there to the extent that he really could have gone a lot lower. He had time to think about it, Rickardson. So they lost Rod Silver into the sin bin earlier. 
now Los Rickardson for the duration of the game, and that's just over 24 minutes. I suppose when you look at it, there have been a lot of high tackles tonight, and McCallum's worked overtime, hasn't he, to, to keep this uh, game cooled down because uh, tempers are flared out there. Now, this will be a penalty, and it is to St George. Yeah, we have seen some silly stuff, haven't we? Ian Heron pushing a, a player over on the fifth tackle. Jeff Orford, but the, the tackle was completed well and truly before he had any right to pick the player up and take him towards the sideline. Even that kind of tackle starts off being a little bit dangerous. And here's Orford dragging coin for well, four metres after he'd obviously been, been held. So the pendulum has swung very much to St George now. 13 against 12, 12 all the score, 23 minutes to go, and Gordon Tallis has already put a mark on the game. Blake, he knows they're one short, now he starts to run himself, gets between the defence, got the pass away, but referee McCallum has ordered a forward pass. Yeah, Phil Blake now starting to run, 12 minutes on the football field for East, there's plenty of gaps out there, and Blake saw a chance here. Ran across her looking for open space. He got on the outside of Hudson who came again and just made it hard enough for Blake and Orford did well to get in between the two players there. St. George. No, McCallum has called it back. I thought for a moment that East had levelled up the, uh, the scrums one against the head. Orford takes it out. 8-5 the scrums, including one, as I said, against the head for Eastern Suburbs. They've got a big push on a scrum earlier on. Here's the ball coming out again. Penalty to Eastern Suburbs against Brad Mackay. Well, that will help Eastern Suburbs. Smith should find touch a little bit out of their danger area. Jason Hudson, who's been very well contained tonight, couldn't break the tackle but earned the penalty. And now Eastern Suburbs with 12 men We'll be, oh, he hasn't found touch, Smith. That'll be play mistake. on, not backwards by Heron. I was going to say, with 12 men, they still want to employ two markers, but so much emphasis now for their outside men in defence getting up and turning the attack of St George back in field. Tallis. I wonder, is a, a green and gold jumper out of the question for him? Hardy, Goldthorpe, then Stevens. Not touched by Goulet, picked up by Coyne. And they're 30 metres away from East Line. Played by Coyne. Goulet. Struggling with the defence. Brown. Stevens. Across the 20 metre line. Pops it up and Lowry comes away with it for the Roosters. Hudson. This gives the impression, Jason Hudson, that maybe he's, he's doing the stepping long before he needs to do it because even the most lumbering of forwards is able to read his step. What Jason Hudson has done tonight, he's had to go look for the football because he's, when he's been out wide, it's not coming to him. So you've seen Jason Hudson, whenever he's had the football, he's either run from dummy half or one off the ruck. And he's not that sort of a player. He's got step speed. He wants to be staying out wide and they must get the ball to him. Brian Smith keeps it pretty low, and uh, Maybon is going to bring it back. Runs straight at Orford and Hudson, wrapped up on the 30-metre line. We're still locked up at 12 points all, 20 minutes to go. Walford puts it down. Well, he's ruled that there was a knock-on against both. I don't know that I saw Salvatore knock-on, but McCallum must have. Walford gets... He puts it down cold. And referee McCallum must have felt that the ball came off the arm of Salvatore as well. Nevertheless, the Roosters now with a great opportunity. One player down and all. That's where they are on the field. Brian Smith. Back into the centre for Gaffey. Smith. Calling it to the left, but Marshall goes for a dummy half run. St George player got injured in that. I think it's Coyne. Salvatore! Wear it! Oh, wear it! He got outside Heron. And where it scores his second try of the night. A 
Oh, Salvatore! Oh, what a magic pass by the former Australian test front rower, Craig Salvatore. He saw Heron out of the corner of the eye, coming in in defence. He didn't have to, Heron. He was one-on-one on where it, and he came in. And Craig Salvatore, so look at him, he's looking. That's a beautiful pass. And where it finished it off well. Yeah, let's just have a look at how you can beat a man with the pass, especially with this speed. Blind side, there's not much on here. Let's just have a look at what Ian Heron does. Salvatore goes to the line. As he frees it there, you can see Heron is starting to come in that way. Where it outside, the quickest man on the field. The pass has been thrown already as play continues. And Heron flat-footed. All he had to do was stay on his man and there was nothing on. And Shane Werrett. Second try, they're defying the odds for Roosters. They're down to 12 men, two for the season. And what's left on the clock? 19 minutes. Well, if you saw that, it was it was two Roosters against the three Dragons, a try that should never have been scored, but because of the skill of Salvatore, they're over. And going back to the lead. Well, some concern over Brad Mackay. Now, Brian Smith. Can he put them six in front? One player down, remember. Rickardson sent off. 23 minutes to go in the game when he was sent. Now, 18 and a half to go, and Brian Smith gets the goal. 18, 12, and the red, white, and blue. They go up again. 62 gone, they're in front by six. Welcome back. 18-12, the boys from Bondi. They were the rank outsiders going into it. And here they are, one man down, Rickardson sent off. In front of a crowd of 18,820. And they're in front by six. Replacements thrown into the game. Looks like Jason Keogh out there for Eastern Suburbs was the centre part partner for Jason, Jason Hudson in the pre-season competition. And he played very good football in that, so not a bad replacement to come on in this situation as the ball goes back to Smith centre field. Drives it to the right, or his right. And Maybon picks up the bouncing ball. Maybon able to avoid uh, Shane Werrett. Now, Saints, they'll be keen to spread the ball at every opportunity to play Eastern Suburbs in the centre of the park. It would be uh, fairly hard to understand, given that they've got 13 on 12. What's the story on Brad Mackay, Blocker? Yeah, nothing wrong with Brad Mackay. He's just been replaced for a rest. And uh, interesting to see Eastern Suburbs want to attack by putting Tani Iro on. He can put on a try. St. George. Now, they've called a halt. Time out. There's concern in the back play for Wayne Singh, who's been treated by Ronnie Palmer, the East trainer there. The touch judge has come in, so he's seen an infringement, obviously. Imagine on Wayne Singh. There he is. Well, mm. he's kicking out in the tackle. I'd say will be the report. It will be a penalty to Eastern Suburbs against David Barnhill. Greg McCallum's had a very busy start to the season. This has been a fairly spiteful game on and off. We've had one player sent off. We had uh, Tony Priddle assisted off after a confrontation with Bruce Sinclair. And uh, the penalty goes to Eastern Suburbs and Big Sally puts up the right arm. We'll be going for goal, sir. Barnhill, the offender, watch it again. Lashes out with the left leg and Singh wears it in the face. Well, there's no doubt that that is dangerous. You see a lot of players trying to get up quickly to play the ball. We come up with that with that action. Well, I agree with the penalty. That, so do that I. has got to be outlawed completely out of the game. It's not on. Players, uh, you can cop plenty in that with the sprigs and the tags of the boots going around the face.
So Brian Smith, 35 metres out. This time, he's just off centre. This can take them outside the margin of the converted try. Right here, a chance to practically seal the game, and it's wide. Well, St George could have caught that football. That's unbelievable lack of communication. It now means that Eastern Suburbs will get the ball back. But have a look at this. The kick's not going to go dead. Maybon and Walford, they think it is, but there was a catch there. They could have had possession. They could have run it into the field of play. Salvatore already has had a great game, and he could be a front-runner for the Anset $1,000 man of the match welcome Anset to our rugby league coverages in 1994 oh Iroh took it up oh what a good tackle though by Jason Stevens front on Houston Suburbs they can smell victory 18-12 in front the price of field goal Marshall with a little pirouette, and then he's tackled 15 out. Well, Smith wants it. He's behind the ruck. Smith has got a big uh, parcel of land between he and the defence. But it all backfired. Good work by St George. Yeah, Blake and Goldthorpe, the men who really put pressure on Smith and absolutely smashed him. Barnhill. Maybon. 12 metres on their own side of halfway. Can they get through? Hardy. He did well. Mark Coyne reaches the halfway line. Somehow or other, they keep finding numbers, the, uh, the Eastern Suburb side. Goldthorpe runs wide, looking to link up. Played by Tallis. Dummy by Goldthorpe, this is the last. And eventually lands on the back of Wayne Marshall. So it's Eastern Suburbs with the football through Salvatore. There's some brave stuff there too. Wayne Singh just diving across there, trying to stop the St George chases him coming through. Could have copped any sort of kick here. Goldthorpe, the little chip through. You'll see 53 come flying across in a minute. Doesn't come up with the ball. He put himself in a position where he could have been hurt. Marshall. That is Singh with a, a hit and spin back for Marshall. He always stays alive, Marshall. He always gives every play his fullest attention. Marshall again. Smith. This time goes to the air. Maybon from the deep and takes it well. Walford. It's in George have got themselves organised like they should to do what they've got to do to Eastern Suburbs. Goldthorpe. Well, they have got plenty of time. There's still 12 minutes and 15 seconds to go in this game. And I imagine it is Noel Goldthorpe who does have to do the organising out there now. It's his first game back this year. He's been out injured. Talis has probably looked their most dangerous forward. Still plenty of attacking scope out there for the Saints, and they are a player up on the opposition. What a one-out stuff, though, by St George. They're the team with one more player. Silva, right across the ground. Shut down eventually, 25 metres out from his own line. Was that pass forward? Look forward from here, but they've got to shut down Rod Silva. Give him an inch, he'll take 10 miles to saw that run. Very dangerous player, Smith now nowhere to go. Oh, driven back. Hard stuff. Oh, yeah, good defence there by Hardy and Tallis, and that's a lost ball by Smith. Well, has it gone forward? He's really he's lost it in the tackle. Look at this, they pick him up and drive him. Thirty-eight metres out from the eastern suburbs line. Eighteen, twelve, some. The big grins on the faces of Eastern Suburbs officialdom. Bradley. Heron 
of the dummy half. Tries to fend away from uh, Keo. Straight away for St George, both Jeff Hardy and Scott Goulet have gone wide of the ruck to the right-hand side. Brown can't make any ground up the middle. But the big men are set wide, and that's where Goldthorpe will look. They've got to start to spread the ball. Goldthorpe goes up the middle again. Now Brown uses the ball for Blake. Blake tries to go himself. It may come off. It has. Or did he ground it? Christian yeah. Mark. He's grounded it all right. Try for Phil Blake. A Phil Blake special. He's turned the clock back 10 years for that one. Saw there was no one home. And so George in a minute will be evens with the Eastern Suburb side. Look at the East defence. They've really struggled with the 12 men. They've done a great job. Blakey looked up. Rod Silver actually was the marker there. And as soon as he kicked it, he was home and hosed. Well, you've got to blame some of the Eastern Suburbs players who should have realised that Silver was there at marker, as Paul points out. The halfback, the lock. Somebody had to get back into the second line. Phil Blake, a master at that play. No doubt that he grounded the ball fairly. And he's grounded it in the best position possible. We're going to have a tied ball game here with nine and a half minutes to go. Maybe a touch of Phil Blake magic has turned this game on its ear in favour of the Saints. Both sides have got some very capable field goal exponents. Goldthorpe, he'll be looking for a drop goal. Brian Smith has already taken the one shot. Heron has only just got it off the tarmac, but we're level at 18 all. It wouldn't want to be much further out. Very dusty kick, but look at Blake. The good thing about the, the try was he looked out wide and saw that they were covered out there and said, well, have a look. What's it behind the line? No one. Tremendously talented player, Phil Blake. Nobody's ever doubted that. An opportunity for him to grab the number six jumper for uh, a good slice of the season now. And he is not good on Tony Smith. Goulet punctures Eastern Suburbs with a strong run. Goldthorpe capitalises. Maybon forced back. 42 metres out from his line. Jason Stevens. Now it became it becomes a game of getting it down into field goal territory. Tell us they, they won't need a field goal. Goldthorpe scores. Tell us he's been threatening to do the damage and now he has. Oh, Gordon Tallis, let me tell you, he's one of the most exciting prospects I've seen for a long time. This hard-running second row from St George. He's carved them up here. They put a nice ball on for him on the inside. He's a happy man too. Why wouldn't he be? Nathan Brown it is. Look at this pass. Lovely. The markers didn't work. Brian Smith didn't work there in defence from the mark area. Beats another one. Draws and passes. Think about Gordon Tellis. When he gets the football, he wants to run. He wants to break the line. And Goldthorpe did well to finish off the movement. Yeah, he was slow to react there was Brian Smith. He was the second marker. He didn't think there was any danger. Look, he's, he's tired there. And Gordon Tallis, what a stride he's got. Accelerates so quickly. The perfect setup there for Noel Gold. Smith, ankle tapped by Nigel Gaffey. He came up with a valiant chase. Gordon Tallis, Ray was talking about him being a potential Australian player. He'll play some rep football, that is for sure. What about this side? Stuff the sovereign we've got going. <laughs> they might be in favour of a republic, do you think? Just slightly. Goodness, they go to some uh, some efforts, don't they? The rugby league flag wavers. They love their game. They don't mean any harm either, I'm sure. Heron from right in front, 12 hours. Now the Dragons. Now the red and whites. 24-18. This has been a gallant effort by East. 
they're not, uh, not beaten yet, they've got plenty of ticker there. But just the fact they've had 12 men for the last 15 minutes is starting to take its toll. The Saints with weight of possession. The, those made plenty of ground around the rucks. We saw Goldthorpe made a dashing run a few minutes ago and uh, just around those rucks, they're really struggling. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that St George have played much safer football to the extent that they haven't made as many similar mistakes as they did early in the game. They haven't tried to force the pass as much. I've seen both Brad Mackay and Ricky Walford make simple mistakes, but overall, it's been a much more St George-like performance in this last 10 minutes. Twenty-four eighteen, St George. For the first time in the game, they can breathe just a little bit uh, easier. Talk about this rookie Hudson playing in the set. Drop goal attempt from a mile out by Goldthorpe. Um, Hudson, I was going to make the point. The rookie centre, he's made 18 tackles. That's a high count playing out there. Talking of him, that's Hudson now. Manly and Canterbury for you Sunday night. That's the match of the round in the opener of the 13th Winfield Cup. 6.30. Smith spreads it wide for Gaffey. Well, they've won plenty of hearts here tonight, Eastern Suburbs. Win, lose or draw. And yeah, still trying as Smith throws a long ball out where it can't control. He's got it now. That's a lovely tackle by Blake who kept coming. Yeah, they've played very well. They've played a, a game that they've been playing for years now under the coaching of Mark Murray. Nothing flash about them. They're a disciplined side. And there's only one stroke of actually indiscipline, which has probably cost them the game. That was the, the left cross by uh, Luke Rickardson, which cost him an extra 20 minutes on the field. He's gone, and it cost him the match. Three and three-quarter minutes to go. And Goulet... Goulet tackle just five or six metres from the halfway. Ricky Walford. Kangaroo year. Um, and already I suggested Gordon Tallis might be a contender. But Blocker just tells me we've got 113 on the plane now, have we not? Got a solemn reply. There's a Blake I'd like to throw in too. And Jason Stevens, a young front row forward. Big defence there from Brown. Still gets the ball away. He's been absolutely outstanding tonight, Stevens. He leads the tackle count and the hit-ups. Jeff Hardy cleans up silver. Who yeah, else has done well? Pete, uh, since he's been on this half, is Nathan Brown, hasn't he? Very creative around the rucks. Wayne Collins had a very sound first half. I don't know if he was injured, but uh, Brown has come on and uh, really carved them up up the middle there. Lowry. They've got to try something that mightn't be out of the manual because now it's desperation time. This is the time to squeeze the pass. Well, either squeeze the pass. That's Gaffey's Gaffey. Gaffey. made a break. Gets it to the halfway line. Rod Silver backs up and Silver's tackle. I'd be kicking for Werrett again. Gaffey. Cut out pass. Oh, beautiful ball. Taken in by Keo. Where it's down the right flank. Can he score? Where it puts it down in desperation. Oh, big chance for the Roosters there to draw level. And where it's inexperienced has cost them a barnstorming run down the flanks. They did the right thing. They threw it out to his wing. He's got the, the most speed of anyone on the paddock. But he let the ball go on the end with no support. A nice passes here. Phil Blake rushed up. That's a good ball by Salvo. An extra one, uh, a good one there by Keo. He stumbled where it. Fine tackle here by Maybon. That's a very good tackle. Yeah, I thought where it probably should have tried the little chip over the top and backed himself. Great tackle from Maybon. He's played very well for the Saints. In fact, he's looked better every time that he's gone out in the white and red jersey. David Barnhill. Saints now just grinding it out. They've been behind for the major part of the game. And I don't think too many would disagree that uh, Eastern Suburbs have had the better of the play and looked likely to win, more likely to win than St George for the most part of the game. 
Even the more odd, the um, more ardent St George supporter, I think, would agree with that. Been a great effort by the Tricolours of Bondi. Long passing now. Silva does a circle right in the center of the ground. Saints can't go to sleep entirely. 24 18. 33 seconds remain. They've got about three plays left. They need to get the ball down in position to put the kick up. Probably got two plays left. This should go center field. And Brian Smith, the big one at the end. Come the blind. Salvatore floats it in. Oh, great tackle. That really put Silver out of play. Stevens was the tackler. Marshall to the blind side. Where it says kick it. And the ball comes loose and St George have got it. So that is the ball game. The siren in the background. And St George. They win the first Winfield Cup game of 1994. 24-18. There were plenty of anxious moments for them. Their supporters have gone straight to the bar. And can you blame them? They've played catch-ups practically all night. The turning point came with the send-off of Luke Rickardson with about 23, 25 minutes of the game to go. Still Eastern Suburbs guts it out. But St George takes the two Winfield Cup points. The first on offer. 24-18. Four tries to three.